Cold weather performance has become the new battleground in the EV industry, and the first early season tests of the 2026 Tesla Model 2 have delivered something nobody expected. Engineers monitoring the prototype across controlled testing routes from minus 12 degrees Celsius mountain passes to zero degrees Celsius. Urban stop-and-go cycles reported results that are already rattling competitors from China to Europe. But what exactly makes this winter trial so different, and why are analysts saying it shocks the entire industry? Can the Model 2 retain usable range in real-world freezing conditions? How does its heating system compare to rivals in this price bracket? And does this early test finally prove that cold climate EV ownership is becoming realistic for the average buyer, not just premium customers? These are the questions we'll break down in today's analysis. If you enjoy smart, concise analysis without the fluff, then help us push toward our next milestone of 15,999 subscribers. Honestly, that last 999 is driving us crazy. So if you're watching without being subscribed, you might be the person who finally pushes us over the edge. Hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss the next Tesla update. Now, let's dive in. How does the Model 2's new battery chemistry actually respond to sub-zero temperatures? The biggest question surrounding the 2026 Model 2 is whether its rumored new battery pack can truly outperform the cold weather limitations that have historically crippled small EVs. Tesla has reportedly been experimenting with two different chemistries for the Model 2 program, an upgraded LFP pack sourced from China-based partners and a more experimental high-silicon anode variant intended for Fremont and Texas builds. Both chemistries were tested under identical protocols during these early cold weather cycles allowing engineers to compare how each responds when ambient temperatures drop to minus 12 degrees Celsius, minus 8 degrees Celsius, and minus 2 degrees Celsius. The biggest surprise came from the LFP version, long known to lose significant efficiency in winter. Internal testing logs suggest that Tesla's new thermal preconditioning strategy, borrowed from the Cybertruck's heat routing design, allowed the pack to maintain far more stable performance than previous LFP generations. Early estimates indicate a range loss of roughly 38 to 42 miles on a 250-mile baseline route at minus 10 degrees Celsius, which marks one of the best results recorded in the compact EV class. For comparison, similar size LFP-based models from BYD and MG typically drop between 55 and 70 miles under the same conditions, according to European WLTC winter cycles. This difference becomes even more critical when considering that the Model 2's pack is expected to come in at around 48 to 52 kilowatt hours, meaning Tesla is extracting more real-world efficiency from a smaller reservoir of energy. Meanwhile, the high silicon test pack behaved differently but in ways that analysts say could become a new benchmark for sub-$30,000 EVs. Silicon-enhanced anodes usually struggle in freezing conditions because of their tendency to expand and contract more aggressively. But Tesla's early tests show that the thermal envelope around this pack remains far more stable than prototypes from other suppliers. At minus 8 degrees Celsius, the silicon-based Model 2 recorded a range drop of roughly 31 to 35 miles on the same loop, nearly identical to some long-range EVs costing twice as much. While Tesla has not confirmed whether this version will enter mass production, the cold weather numbers alone indicate a chemistry that could compete directly with entry-level offerings from Volkswagen, Hyundai, and Renault, particularly in markets with harsh winters. Where the testing becomes even more interesting is in charging behavior. Most compact EVs struggle to charge efficiently when pack temperatures fall below the optimal 22 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius window, often requiring long preheat cycles that waste energy and time. During the trial, the Model 2 prototypes were fast charged at a 130 kilowatt station immediately after exposure to minus 10 degrees Celsius ambient temperatures. The LFP pack required just 14 minutes of preconditioning before stabilizing at a usable charge rate, while the silicon anode variant managed to reach optimal charging state after 9 minutes, 
a time that rivals some premium EVs. In contrast, current budget EVs in the same segment often require preheat cycles lasting 20 to 30 minutes, especially in Scandinavian or Canadian climates, resulting in dramatically longer winter fast charging stops. The takeaway from this first testing phase is straightforward. Tesla appears to have solved the worst winter issues that typically plague small EVs, not through drastically new chemistry, but through improved thermal control and optimized pack architecture. This is exactly why the industry is reacting so strongly, because these gains aren't theoretical. They appear in real measurable numbers, and they directly impact daily winter usability for millions of drivers who currently hesitate to buy EVs because of cold weather reliability. Wait, here's the question for you. If you had to choose just one winter driving priority, what would it be? Comment range if you care most about cold weather driving distance. Comment charging if fast winter charging is your top priority. Comment traction if safety and grip on ice matter most to you. And don't forget to share why in the comments below. How can the Model 2 maintain cabin heat without killing real-world range? A second major concern for winter EV ownership is cabin heating, which has historically been a range killer, especially for smaller cars with limited battery capacity. The 2026 Model 2's winter evaluation focused heavily on this point, because heating loads at minus 12 degrees Celsius can consume anywhere from 2,000 to 4,500 watts depending on insulation quality, heat pump efficiency, and how quickly the cabin reaches stable temperature. For reference, the average compact EV sold today loses between 22 and 45 miles of range per hour of continuous cabin heating at freezing temperatures. Tesla appears to be attacking the issue on three fronts, a redesigned heat pump architecture, a heat distribution system adapted from the Model Y's octovalve routing logic, and more efficient seat and steering wheel heating elements that reduce the need for full cabin heating in short trips. The heat pump itself is smaller than the unit used in the Model Y, but uses a denser refrigerant mix capable of maintaining pressure at significantly lower ambient temperatures. Engineers monitoring the test cycle reported that the system achieved stable cabin temperatures of 21 degrees Celsius within just four minutes at minus eight degrees Celsius and under six minutes at minus 12 degrees Celsius. This is substantially faster than heating units used in competing EVs like the Renault 5 EV or BYD Seagull EV, both of which typically require eight to 12 minutes to reach equivalent levels of cabin comfort. Just as important is how the Model 2 balances heating demand with energy conservation. Instead of blasting the heat pump at maximum output, the climate control algorithm prioritizes surface level heating, primarily the seats, steering wheel, and a narrow band windshield heating line, before transitioning to full air heating only when interior sensors confirm that the driver is actively demanding warmer airflow. This change reduces peak heating load during the first 10 minutes of driving by an estimated 800 to 1,200 watts, depending on cabin size and outside temperature. During testing at minus 10 degrees Celsius, the heat pump's continuous draw stabilized at around 1,600 watts after warm-up, which is roughly 35 to 40 percent lower than the heating load found in the Seagull EV class. Real-world efficiency numbers from the early tests paint an even clearer picture. Engineers ran two identical 43-kilometer urban test routes at minus 8 degrees Celsius, one with cabin heating enabled at 21 degrees Celsius, and one using only seat and wheel heating. The full cabin heating run resulted in a range penalty of 15.6 kilometers, while the surface heating run reduced the penalty to just 7.4 kilometers, a difference that heavily favors drivers making frequent short winter commutes. This aligns with one of Tesla's major winter strategy goals, ensuring that the Model 2 remains predictable and usable even on small errands, where heating losses can normally account for more than half the energy consumed. Tesla has also added an important cold weather feature that rivals in the sub-$30,000 segment currently lack dynamic thermal preconditioning tied to navigation data. 
If a driver sets a route to a supercharger while ambient temperatures are below freezing, the Model 2 will begin raising battery temperatures step by step in the background, but, crucially, will not fully activate the heat pump until roughly 12 to 18 minutes before expected charger arrival. This strategy avoids wasting energy at the beginning of the trip, where most EVs heat the pack too early and let it cool again during long highway stretches. Competitive benchmarking shows how meaningful this feature is. In BYD's Dolphin Mini, cold weather charging speeds often fall to 35 to 45 kilowatts, unless the pack is preheated aggressively in advance. During Tesla's trial, the Model 2 hit 118 to 126 kilowatts at a V3 station after a 32-minute drive in minus 10 degrees Celsius conditions, demonstrating that the thermal ramp-up was precisely timed and did not waste extra energy. All these factors combine into the most important winter driving metric for everyday buyers, usable range after heating penalties. Based on preliminary data, the LFP Model 2 prototype maintained roughly 295 to 304 kilometers of predictable winter range at minus 10 degrees Celsius during mixed driving. For a compact EV priced in the mid-20,000s, this is a number that no current competitor in North America or Europe can match, even those with slightly larger battery packs. And for drivers living in Canada, Northern Europe, or Northern U.S. states, this alone could determine whether the Model 2 becomes their first-ever EV. Cold weather range and heating efficiency are shaping up to be two of the biggest surprises in the Model 2's early testing, and we've only scratched the surface. And that brings us to the end of today's video. We're out of time for part one, but we're far from done. There's still a lot we haven't analyzed yet. Traction on ice, braking stability, winter steering response, and the bigger question, what all of this means for the Model 2's real-world value in cold climates. So make sure you don't miss part two of this winter deep dive. What winter test are you most curious about in the next video? If you enjoyed the breakdown, Hit like, subscribe, and turn on the bell to help Auto Gear Shift get closer to our goal of 15,999 subscribers and to catch part two the moment it drops.